I'm only making this video because I get so many comments from people telling me that I'm in denial about climate change, that soon there's going to be an abrupt change to the climate that will result in a catastrophic change to Earth systems that will mean humans might become extinct within the next 10 years. And they say, there's nothing we can do about it. So, in this video, I'm going to look at, are the doomers right? If you haven't got time to watch the whole video, I can sum it up quite well with this uh, writing by Seneca, who was a Roman statesman who lived about 2,000 years ago. The mind at times fashions for itself false shapes of evil when there are no signs that point to any evil. It twists into the worst construction some word of doubtful meaning. But life is not worth living and there is no limit to our sorrows if we indulge our fears to the greatest possible extent. Remember that phrase about, what was it? The worst construction, some word of doubtful meaning. That would be a common theme throughout the video. Well, first of all, let's look at what the scientists say, and then we've got something to compare the doomers' concerns with. For this video, I'm going to use Professor Michael Mann as the gold standard for science because he's one of the world's most respected climate scientists. He coined the phrase, uh, the hockey stick curve. He's regularly on television being interviewed about the climate emergency, which means everything he says has to be rock solid because you can be quite sure there are doomers or climate change deniers who will pick him up on any mistakes he makes. He seems to be on a one-man mission of saving the world from the climate emergency. He seems to spend every evening on Twitter playing whack-a-mole with the climate change deniers or the doomers. We must consider worst-case scenarios when assessing our vulnerability particularly given the fact that we have historically underestimated the rate and magnitude of key climate change impacts. He accepts we're in the worst case scenario situation and that we're already in danger. Dangerous climate change is here already. There is no danger target to worry about missing. It is too late to prevent harmful impacts. They're here already. But his genius is not being too specific because as we've seen in the past, it's very difficult to predict how Earth's uh, systems will react to climate change and how seriously they'll be affected and when it will happen. So he's, he's come up with a much better way of expressing his concerns. He says, in reality, we don't know where the different tipping points are. The collapse of the thermaline circulation, the Atlantic meridional overturning current, the commitment to the melting of the entire West Antarctic ice sheet. We just know that these tipping points lie out there like mines in a minefield. And the only sensible strategy is not to go further out onto that minefield, lest we begin to trigger more and more of these irreversible and truly catastrophic changes in the climate system. What are the mines? He doesn't say. What happens if we hit a mine? He doesn't say. When are we going to hit them? We don't know. That's really all you can say. You can't be any more specific than that. But he's acting to try and save the world from the climate emergency, and he's showing leadership. The consequences of doing nothing grow by the day. The time to act is now. He fully acknowledges the dangers we're in, but he's very concerned that we shouldn't overstate what the problem is. But there is also a danger in overstating the threat in a way that presents the problem as unsolvable, feeding into a sense of doom. Research has shown that the most motivating emotions are worry, interest, and hope. Importantly, fear does not motivate and appealing to it is often counterproductive. And like the other scientists, he realises our civilization is in danger. It is up to us as to whether or not human civilization will remain viable. In the worst case scenario, it won't. Remember, all the scientists are, are now uh, taking the worst case scenarios very seriously. That's what the scientists think, that things are serious, our civilization's in danger, but there's still hope. And they're very aware of uncertainty so they're not going to make any rash predictions about dates or specific events. Now we look at the doomers and what they think. And they're not so good, the doomers, as explaining their thinking. For example, some of the, um, the doomer videos, they talk about general principles of things. Maybe they talk about, uh, maybe they read from official scientific documents but then they make a bit of a leap you know they say things are very serious by reading these documents and that means humans will be extinct within the next 10 years or so and they think things are going to change so quickly and be so catastrophic because they're very concerned about exponential change so for example i think every year i've got it here somewhere 
every year the Greenland ice sheet loses uh, 271 gigatons of ice. So if you were to draw that on a, or on, on a chart, you say 2023 lost 271 gigatons, 2024 271 gigatons. So if you plot it year by year, you get a flat line. If you sort of do a cumulative uh, chart, you get a straight line going up because it's, it's constant rate. The doomers are concerned, if you had exponential melting in the, on the Greenland ice sheet, then even though it might start off being quite a low level of melting, because it's exponential, and uh, but I should say an exponential change is where, one where the rate of change is increasing. So you might get a small amount of melting the first year, second year a bit more, a bit more, the rate gradually, gradually goes up. And although you start off quite low, and although the rate of increase might be quite low, sooner or later you get to quite a sharp increase in the amount of melting going on. And the example people always give for exponential increase is if you put a single grain of rice on the first square of a chessboard and then you double up every square. So you go first square, one grain of rice, second square, two grains, third square, four grains, four, eight, sixteen, thirty-two, and you go all the way up to the sixty-fourth square of the chessboard. By the time you get there, there aren't enough grains of rice to be able to, to meet that rule. So you start off quite low, slight increase, but sooner or later you get this massive ramping up. And because of that, people tend to measure exponential increase in terms of the time it takes to double the increase. So let's look at the, one of the Doomer examples. I've come up with this of Professor James Hansen, who was looking at the rate of melting of the Greenland ice sheet. No one actually mentions it specifically, but a couple of doomers do mention that uh, the Greenland ice sheet is melting exponentially. So that's, that's what I'm going to base it on. And Professor James Hansen is one of the great people of history in that his name seems to crop up every video I make, even though it's different periods of time, different areas of climate change, his name c comes up quite often. So he deserves our respect. 2012, Professor Hansen looked at the rate of melting of the Greenland ice sheet and he was concerned that the rate of ice loss could be increasing in an exponential way, which would be very serious. We hypothesise that ice mass loss from the most vulnerable ice sufficient to raise sea level several metres is better approximated as exponential than by a more linear response. But the record is too short to confirm the nature of the response. As a good scientist, Professor Hansen has published his results, but he's very aware that he hasn't got enough years of data to be sure that the rate of change is exponential. And remember, science isn't just used for climate change, it's used for building bridges and developing new medicines. It's really important that the scientists are sure that their results are accurate. As soon as you start letting in less accurate but possible information into your set of data, all the bridges fall down and new medicines stop working. So for a scientist, the truth is much more important than maybe raise the alarm much earlier. That's the scientific principle. If there is an exponential increase in the melting of ice at a Greenland ice sheet, that could be very serious. I think the governments of the world would like to know sooner rather than later. Problem is, by the time the data record is long enough to be convincing, it may be exceedingly difficult or impossible to prevent sea level rise of many metres. Well, the sea level rise of many metres, that's the end of London and New York and Washington and places like that. Well, the scientists realise that the way that the ice melt was being measured in Greenland wasn't all that accurate. And since then, there are now three satellites that monitor the ice mass of the Greenland ice sheet. And so we're getting now a more accurate uh, reading because the scientists are concerned to be, to be sure about their data rather than raising the alarm as soon as possible in case it's very serious. The Doomers have another principle they're working to, which is equally respectable, and that's called the precautionary principle. And it says, if we're in a situation where you think maybe the Greenland ice sheet is melting exponentially, then the sooner we act, the better. It's a very serious thing. We must take it seriously. We must, you know, unless we're sure we're safe, any, any hint of danger, then we need to really react. 11 years later, how did things turn out? Was the Greenland ice sheet melting exponentially and we're all in danger? Or was it just a problem that the data was too, too limited for it to be sure? Well, here's a, Here's the latest data from NASA. They've drawn a nice graph. And can you see 
NASA says every year we lose about 271 gigatons of ice and it's the ice mass of Greenland is gradually going down. Can you see in the graph the year 2112? There was quite a dip that year wasn't there? So you can understand how Professor Hansen thought well maybe it is melting more quickly than we thought. And we get this phrase, the mind twists into the worst construction, some word of doubtful meaning. So this is the question, what should, you, what should we do in that situation? Well we might think the doomers are wrong, the amount of ice being lost from Greenland ice sheet is linear, it's not exponential, but have a look at this chart from the latest United Nations report. It shows the ice mass on Greenland and for higher emission scenarios, for the worst case scenarios which we now take seriously, the rate of loss does increase doesn't it? So it is exponential, it's very slow and gentle, maybe won't wipe us out by 2026. But the underlying concern that these things can happen exponentially, that, that is a real concern. And as, as we know, the climate models never run past the year 2100 because it was just too complex and they'd be so inaccurate if you go past there. If that rate of increase, exponential increase, carried on after the year 2100, in the worst case scenarios, it would be very serious. So the doomers are sort of right. They base it on some initial scientific paper so they're not like climate change deniers, are they? You know, they generally want to understand what's happening. The trouble is, they're not scientists, and their access to the science is a bit limited. At one time, if we had an important news story, that would be covered by a journalist, a journalist who had a background in science, possibly, maybe the science correspondent for an organisation. They would understand the paper, they would understand the risk of jumping too soon and they'd be able to interview the scientists, wouldn't they? Quite often these uh, in The Guardian, they'll interview the scientists who's published the paper and get a better understanding. So just as the lack of interest in climate change, as we've seen in previous videos, has meant most people in, in the world don't really understand how serious it is, maybe aren't that concerned, there's another group of people who are very concerned about climate change and they're suffering as well because they're, they're not really getting the full, the full story. Also, to be a good scientist, you have to be concerned about getting to the truth. If the evidence changes, you need to sort of change your opinion because, you know, it doesn't matter who said it or how they said it. It's just a matter of understanding what's going on. So you might think the Doomers would have seen the latest data from NASA and have re retracted their concerns about human extinction happening so soon. But it seems to be once they've made that commitment, they seem to like to keep to it. Because I don't think that's such good science. Well, now we come to probably the most serious concern the Doomers have, that even if we were to get to net zero now and we would drastically just change our global economy, it's too late. There's already too much CO2 in the atmosphere, too much heating in Earth systems, and there's nothing we can do to avoid a collapse. For many years, the scientific rule of thumb was that a sizable amount of temperature rise was indeed locked into Earth's climate system. But guided by subsequent research, scientists dramatically revised that lag time estimate down to as little as three to five years. The Doomers, they do start basing their ideas on the science, but then they're sort of committed to them and they don't seem to update them when the science changes. If humanity slashes emissions to zero, that's a really big if, if humanity slashes emissions to zero, global temperatures will stop rising almost immediately. This is the important thing because it means there is something we can do about it. We're in a minefield, we could hit a mine at any moment. What would happen if we hit a mine? We don't know. Will we survive? We don't know. But there is still hope. Psychology is arguably the most important, for it makes possible the rest. Knowing that global temperature rise can be stopped almost immediately means that humanity is not doomed after all. We can still save our civilization, at least most of it, if we take rapid forceful action. This knowledge can banish the sense of inevitability that paralyzes people and instead inspire them towards greater resolve and activity. The key word there is, we can still save our civilization if we take rapid action. The idea that as soon as we get to net zero, we're safe, is not a universal truth. It might be true now. If we wait too long, then we'll be in the world of tipping points and maybe the climate change will run away and there'd be nothing we can do about it. But if we act now, if we get to net zero as soon as we can, if, a really big if, then 
then there's still hope. The projected future temperature change 50 years after zero emissions is reached varies from a 0.3 degrees Celsius of cooling to a 0.3 degrees Celsius of warming. So temperatures will fall, but it will take a long time. In the very long run, over many hundreds of thousands of years, carbon sinks would become dominant and global temperatures would eventually fall, as long as anthropogenic CO2 emissions remained at net zero. So this is the, the one hope for the world. We can get to net zero quickly. This is why, as we saw in a previous video, Antonio Guterres, the Secretary General of the United Nations, is all about keeping temperature rises to 1.5 or 2 degrees Celsius. You know, he's in that position of leadership. Well, this is where our only hope of survival lasts, getting CO2 emissions down to zero as quickly as possible. If, however, zero emissions were to occur later in the century, there is the potential to lock in more carbon cycle feedback processes, such as melting permafrost than under current global temperature levels. A world that has warmed three or four degrees Celsius above pre-industrial levels may lock in more committed future warming than today's world and more research is needed to explore these effects. Uncertainty again. And as we know, we're already in a world where tipping points could start to kick in, where we could hit a mine. The sooner we, we can lower temperatures by getting to net zero, the sooner we'll be safe from these tipping points. But even if we do get to net zero, Earth systems will still continue to respond and be affected by the high temperatures for some time to come. Melting glaciers and ice sheets and rising sea levels all occur slowly and lag behind surface temperature warming. A zero emissions world would still result in rising sea levels for many centuries to come, with some estimates suggesting that at least an 80 centimetre of additional sea level rise is locked in. The Thames barrier can only cope with a 50 centimetre increase in sea levels. To stop these impacts may ultimately require reducing global temperatures through net negative global emissions. So we have to take CO2 out of the atmosphere which is a very expensive, very energy intensive process. Possibly we'll need geoengineering, which is very dubious, but you know, if it gives us hope, let's keep going. Not just stopping temperature from rising by net reaching net zero. Are the doomers right? Not at the moment. There's a great deal of uncertainty, which means it could become true any moment. But Professor Mann is much more concerned about saving the world from climate change than he is from documenting its, its uh, collapse. If there's any hope there's something we can do, he wants us to do it. There is another reason why we have to be careful not to fall into the trap of being doomers and concentrating on the wor very worst possibilities because people are starting to become more aware of climate change but there's still a lot of climate deniers out there who are looking for any excuse to show the climate science is wrong. So if you, if you exaggerate something, then in 10 or 20 years time, if we're still here, they can say, look, this scientist said 10 years ago, this would happen, it hasn't happened, and therefore all science is wrong. And the number one example everyone uh, picks on is your prediction of when you thought that Antarctic would be completely ice free. Lots of scientists have had a guess. Nobody says, well done for raising our concerns about it and having a guess. They all use it as a reason to say, you were wrong, therefore you're a rubbish scientist and all climate science is wrong. So don't exaggerate because it will help to undermine things in the future. Be like Professor Mann and just say, we're in a minefield. We don't know when we hit the mine. We don't know what will happen when we hit the mine, but we need to get out of the minefield as quickly as possible by getting to net zero. There aren't that many people concerned about climate change as it is. The last thing you want is some of the small group of people who are concerned to give up because you aren't just giving up on your hopes and dreams you're giving up on civilization that's a real responsibility that's all the time i'm prepared to spend on this video apart from i've got one more section of seneca to read and it's all about being positive even when things seem absolutely dire and there seems almost no hope as long as there's almost no hope there is still some hope the mind at times fashions for itself false shapes of evil when there are no signs that point to any evil. It twists into the worst construction some word of doubtful meaning. But life is not worth living and there is no limit to our sorrows if we indulge our fears to the greatest possible extent. What I advise you to do is this, not to be unhappy before the crisis comes, 
since it may be that the dangers before you will never come. Certainly, they have not come yet. Fortune has often in the past got the upper hand of you, and yet you have not surrendered, but have leaped up and stood your ground still more eagerly. The human spirit gains much strength by being challenged. People have been let down softly by catastrophe. Sometimes a sword has been checked even at the victim's throat. People have survived their own executioners. You will suffer soon enough, so look forward meanwhile to better things. For you to be able to, to meet your demand. I'll do that bit.